Hello everyone. I am Professor Anish Vora and I welcome you all in my new video. Currently we are running a series of video lectures on design of induction motor. In today's video lecture, we will study design of wound rotor. In case of three phase induction motor, we know that we have two different, two different types of uh, rotor is possible. One is a squared pitch type and another is a wound rotor or slip ring type. For both the rotor, the design of stator is common. In previous lectures, we have studied stator design and rotor design for squared pitch type of rotor. In today's video lecture, we will study designing steps for a wound rotor. Before we start uh, actual design process, let us see the basic uh, construction of the uh, rotor. As shown in figure, we can see that the stator slots, stator core, but we are interested in designing of a rotor. We have, as shown in figure, we have rotor slots. And this part is known as a core, a rotor core, so depth of the rotor core. At the center, we connect a shaft and that is known as an inner diameter of the rotor lamination. We have air gap in between the stator and the rotor. So this is basic uh, construction of wound rotor type. Rotor winding, normally it is connected in star and at the another end, one end is connected in star point and another windings, three windings are taken outside and it is connected to the slip rings. These are one, two and three, three slip rings. On another side, brushes are connected and the external resistance can be connected to the slip rings and through the slip ring, it can be connected to the rotor winding. So, in case of rotor design, following steps we need to follow to continue our designing. The first, that is number of rotor slots. Second, number of rotor turns. Area of rotor conductor. Rotor winding. Rotor teeth design. Rotor core design. So, we will study one by one all the factors. So we start with uh, number of rotor slots. Number of rotor slots are such that a balanced three phase winding is obtained. So normally, normally integral number of slots per pole per phase is always chosen. We normally take 2, 3 or 4 slots per pole per phase. That is our normal practice. But sometimes fractional slot winding can also be selected. Fractional slot winding may also be used but it is preferable to use number of slots in multiple of number of phase and pair of poles. Then our next design that is number of rotor turns. The rotor represents secondary of transformer and the voltage between slip rings are maximum when rotor is at rest that is tensional condition. Therefore, to keep rotor voltage to an acceptable level, effective stator to rotor turns ratio like transformer. Therefore, to keep the voltage level across the slip ring a permissible value, we have to adjust stator to rotor turns ratio very effectively. 
So, the ratio of rotor voltage to stator voltage, phase voltage, that is uh, purely dependent on the turns ratio of rotor to stator uh, turns. As shown in the equation, where E and suffix R, E R, that is uh, the rotor voltage per phase at standstill. At standstill, we know that uh, we have maximum voltage ES, that is stator voltage per phase, TR, that is the rotor number of turns per phase, and TS, that is stator number of turns per phase, KWR and KWS, that is the rotor and stator winding factor. So, from this equation, if we choose rotor voltage per phase appropriately, then we can easily able to calculate rotor number of turns. So, as shown in the equation, rotor number of turns can be easily calculated. Here we assume maximum value, permissible value of rotor voltage across standstill. Once we have actual rotor number of turns available designed, then as per actual value of rotor number of turns, again we have to recalculate actual EMF of the rotor voltage and the final voltage across the slip ring can be again recalculated. But for the sake of calculating or for the sake of estimating rather uh, rotor number of turns, we have to assume maximum permissible value of voltage across the slip ring. So, based on this equation, we can easily able to calculate rotor number of turns. Our next is a design that is area of rotor conductor. To calculate area of rotor conductor, first we have to calculate rotor current. In case of rotor current, we take a rotor magnetomotive force as 85 percent to the stator magnetomotive force. As shown in equation, so based on this equation, or based on this relation rather, we can easily able to calculate a rotor current per phase and rotor current per phase that is 0 0.85, 85% 85 to stator MMF and divided by the rotor number of turns. In previous design, we have already calculated rotor number of turns. So, easily rotor current can be calculated. So, based on this rotor current, if we choose appropriate value of current density, then area of the rotor conductor can be easily calculated. So, AR that is cross section area of the rotor conductor and delta R that is current density in a rotor winding ampere per millimeter square. Normally, to avoid excessive rotor copper loss, we choose a current density in a rotor almost equivalent to the stator current density. We use a round type of conductor for smaller motor and for larger motor, we have to go for bar type conductor. So, our next design that is a rotor winding for smaller motor, smaller induction motor, we normally use mush type single layer winding and we normally use semi enclosed type of slots. For larger induction motor, we go for double layer winding. Double layer, we know that it is either lap or wave type of a winding 
we normally use uh, two bars per slot but sometime if we use more than two bars per slot and then it is called barrel winding and it is a uh, normally wave wind so for larger motor we go for a bar type winding instead of round conductor so next is uh, our rotor design the rotor teeth design the width of the rotor slot the width of rotor slot should be such that the flux density in the rotor teeth does not exceed beyond 1.7 weber per meter square the maximum flux density for rotor teeth occurs at their root as that section is minimum there so keeping in mind 1.7 weber per meter square flux density that is maximum accordingly we have to design minimum width of rotor teeth so minimum width of rotor teeth that is flux per pole divided by maximum flux density multiplied by slots per pole and net iron length maximum flux density as we discussed that can be taken as a 1.7 weber per meter square so minimum width of rotor teeth that is flux divided by maximum flux density that is 1.7 weber per meter square number of slots rotor slots per pole and net iron length so minimum width of rotor teeth is actually calculated as a rotor slot pitch at a root minus a rotor slot width so if we know the rotor slot pitch and if we subtract rotor slot width from the rotor slot pitch then we have minimum width of rotor teeth can be available so a rotor slot pitch that is pi dr that is rotor diameter minus two times upper side and bottom side dsr that is a depth of the rotor slot and divided by number of rotor slot so that is slot pitch minus rotor slot width that is w and sr so based on this equation we can have minimum width of the rotor teeth as we discussed that w and sr suffix sr that is a rotor slot r for rotor and s for slot dsr that is depth of rotor slot dr that is rotor diameter sr that is total number of rotor slots our next design that is a rotor core design so depth of the rotor core depth of the rotor core can be calculated based on this equation we know that uh, area and flux density that is flux divided by flux density so same we use in this condition area of the depth area of the rotor core that is a depth and net iron length so dcr multiplied by net iron length that is li that is area and that is equal to the flux divided by flux density in this condition we have half of the flux passes through the either side of the rotor core and uh, flux density that is uh, b that is flux density and cr that is uh, the rotor core as we discussed that uh, flux density in rotor core is normally chosen almost equal to the stator core density 
So we know that uh, BCR that is flux density in the rotor core, BCR that is depth of the rotor core, Li that is net iron length. So based on this equation, we can easily able to calculate depth of the rotor core. And uh, to continue rotor core design, once we have depth of the rotor core is available, then inside diameter of the rotor lamination, which is shaft diameter, so inside diameter also can be calculated. So di, that is uh, dr, that is rotor diameter, minus 2 times dsr, that is uh, depth of the rotor slot and dcr that is depth of the rotor core so dcr that is depth of the rotor core dsr that is depth of the rotor slot dr that is rotor diameter so based on this equation we can easily able to calculate inside diameter of the rotor lamination so this way we have completed our uh, rotor design for slip ring type of motor. In previous lecture as we discussed that we have considered design of main dimension, design of uh, stator, then we had uh, calculated design for square cage type of rotor and now in this video lecture we have studied rotor design for slip ring type of motor. So this way we have calculated whole designing part for three phase induction motor. So from next video lectures we will start uh, to study about uh, different performance parameters like uh, no load current, how to calculate no load current based on magnetizing current. Then we have short circuit current based on a leakage reactance. We have dispersion factor. So this type of uh, performance parameters will study in our next lectures. So I must uh, stop here. Thank you for watching my video. Keep watching my video. Thank you very much.